Hello everyone. How are you doing today? Well, it's a Wednesday in late December, and this morning I was just uh, flipping through a couple books and I wanted to read something to you to make a larger point about all of us as a society and how we kind of have an illusion sometimes that things were better back then or things will be better later. It's, it's the illusion that there's ever been a perfect time in history where everyone got along, everything was merry. And I think overcoming this illusion is very important, crucial rather, for our development as we're coming into a new world, if you will. The internet has changed everything. And whether you think that uh, it's doom and gloom or you think of a future utopia, uh, regardless, all of us still have to live on this planet together. And I'd like to read you this hope. It's about the, it's a Hopi, Hopi, the Hopi Indians in this book and the little clip about it that I just flipped to randomly. I have a weird thing that I believe the universe tells me what page I need to flip through. I can take a book and just flip to a random page and read something. And every time it's something that I gain from. I do believe, I'm not a religious person, but I do believe that we're all connected through this thing you might call the ether, the chi, prana, what, I don't give it a name. It just is. I don't understand it. I don't know how it works. I'm not going to pretend to understand how it works. I'm not going to sit there and hold a crystal and pretend I know what I'm talking about. I just say, wow, there are some amazing things that happen in this world. So to get on with it here, well, I came across, to clarify where I got this book, First Houses, was uh, in a dumpster. Many of you, if you followed my channel last year, I came across a dumpster at my son's school when they got out last summer. And I always look inside to see what's in there, and it was loaded with toys, with math blocks. I mean, we're talking like thousands of dollars worth of school supplies that could easily have been at least given or donated to other children. I spent several hours over a period of days in there going through every single thing and separating out what I could. One of the things I found was a large stack of educational materials referring to Native Americans. I have these Washington totem pole guide uh, and an Alaskan one, uh, two folders full of, you know, different projects relating to, you know, different weaponry used. Uh, I've got this big stack of books right here, which is you know, shaped by hands, Indian art of North America. We've got Native American masks, uh, myths and legends of the Haida Indians, cut and assemble a totem pole, um, North American Indians book from the land of totem poles. And uh, anyhow, to get on with it, I was fascinated because I realized that everything's going te technologically uh, to the digital age. So we've kind of lost respect of the actual material, the books. It's not anybody's fault in particular. It's just how things are. And um, I'm going to just get on with reading this because then I can make my point and uh, not make this too long. Um, it's about the Pueblo Indians, okay? And uh, it's just a short... I'm only going to read like a page here, but uh, I thought it would be a good way to make my point because it's the part that came to me. The Pueblo Indians have a rich ceremonial life built around the desire for growth of crops and respect for all living things. In this sun-drenched land, every little bit of rain is treasured, especially during the growing season. Prayers for rain play a major role in most Pueblo religious ceremonies. The Pueblo people have a strong sense of place. Their world is bounded by mountains in all directions, and the mountains are the source of clouds and rain that bring water to the crops. The mountain also contains shrines to the sun and other deities, sacred places that help focus the prayers of the tribe for growth and well-being. According to the Pueblo account of creation, their ancestors came to this world from an underworld several levels below this one. The Hopi and Zuni, for example, believe that humans started in the underworld and climbed through three levels to reach this, the fourth world. The Hopis often refer to the levels as houses, the four houses rest atop one another, much as the houses do in a Pueblo village. And then it has this little uh, side paragraph. It says, According to this Zuni story, after it's called Finding the Center. According to this Zuni story, 
After climbing up from the worlds below, the people wandered about in the four directions in search of a place to settle and build permanent dwellings. Finally, after much dispute, and with the help of Water Strider, the tiny bugs who lives on the surface of the water, they were able to find the center, or the middle place. Now remember that as a metaphor, right? The Zuni considered the six directions, north, south, east, west, above, and below, to be sacred. Hence, it is appropriate that Water Strider, with his six legs, reach towards all six directions to find the middle place. And so then it continues, and uh, it's not too much longer, but this is the part where I wanted to make the point. After emerging from the underworld, through the place of emergence, which the Hopi call the Sipapu, the men, women, and other beings scattered into groups, each group finding a place that suited it, declaring that its own home was the center, or the middle place. Each group complained that the others were in error and not living according to the rules given in the underworld. There was no peace among the groups. And uh, side note, just so I don't forget later, that was this is the main paragraph that I'm trying to make a point on. Um, when I talked about having illusions of things being better, there's often an illusion that Native American tribes didn't have the same conflict, that they actually all got along, and many of them did when times were good. But when water's scarce, when people are afraid, or people don't have the resources they need, there can be debates. But a lot of this is legend, but uh, a lot of it's also true, and that's what makes it difficult to distinguish. It says, After much argument, they all decided to hold a great council and determine once and for all the location of the middle place. Someone suggested that they ask Water, water Strider for help, to help them. Water Strider, oh, uh, Quote, Water Strider, the one who skates on water, has great long legs that can extend in each of six directions to the outer edges. Unquote. Water Strider agreed to help. Some say that Water Strider was Sun Father in disguise. He grew larger, stretched his six legs, and lifted himself up high above the ground to the very heavens. I got cut off and forgot where I was. Um, where were we? To the ground, to the very heavens. Okay, I'm going to go back up a second. I got distracted. Uh, he grew larger, stretched his six legs, and lifted himself high above the ground to the very heavens. He then pushed out his legs in all directions until they touched the waters to the north, west, south, and east, at the edges of the world. One leg reached to the waters above in the northeast and one to the waters below the southwest. The leg that extended to the north touched the frigid water there and shrank back a little. Because the waters to the west were nearer than others, he drew his leg back a little there as well. Then he gradually let his body settle back to the earth. Quote, My heart and navel are resting on the middle. Unquote, he told them. Quote, Here at the center of Mother Earth, you are to build your town. The place Water Strider settled his body was the Valley of Zuni. And there was a town, a town was built. Then slowly Water Strider drew in his long legs where he drew, drew them in, left trails radiating from Zuni in all six directions. Zuni was built at the place Water Strider indicated, no one knowing that he had drawn two of his feet back, swerving a little to the south, settling in his body. However, all were content with their new home. Peace was restored. Now, <laughs> the reason I found that so fascinating wasn't just because the, not just because they have legends of arguments among tribes about where home is. There's a larger context here that can, follows us into the current day where we are consistently looking to say that we have the Middle Earth. We are at the center. Our religion knows what's best. Our politicians know what's best. Whoever it may be. There is very little respect for the individual, and you have to find your own heart. You have to be able to settle your navel and your heart in the center of your own truth and be content with that. You have to be content with not being sure sometimes. The fact that other tribes or other individuals will believe that they have the truth or the center or they know what's normal or they know what's, you know, whatever it may be. My point being that uh, these stories teach us a lot about who we are and also give us kind of a reflection 
into the past. And I've always had a high reverence for, you know, traditional Indian, uh, you know, legends. And when I say Indian, it's not to be offensive, of course. I know a lot of folks would say Native American is preferred. Here's the thing. It wasn't America before people called it America. Therefore, a lot of Native Americans call themselves Indians because they prefer it. They're kind of, in other words, it's only people who are overly sensitive themselves that uh, are afraid of offending Indians, that they won't call them Indians. They say, hey, you called us Indians before. That's just the name we have. It's just a word. So I just want to make that clear. I'll call a person a Native American if they prefer it, but from some of the elders, they just kind of scoff and laugh at it. So at any rate, that's my video for today. Thanks for listening. Let me know what you think. Talk to you all next time. Peace out.